As churches grow, they can become institutional and uh, they can become more about programs than about people and they can become more about events than really disciple making. I think you guys are aware of that. And so we've been fighting hard over the last several years and, and the, the image we use is, is like a battleship turning in the ocean. You know, you can turn a, you can turn a, a speedboat on a dime, uh, but you can't turn a, a battleship uh, on a dime. And so we, we've been taking a, a wide arc because as a church grows, sometimes it, what happens is it, it can get a little off track. And uh, Rex has done a, a great job. Uh, many of these things that uh, Jim was talking about, um, Rex has been on the cutting edge of and, and really engaged with. So I'm just going to share with you just real briefly. Um, I, you've got a handout that's in more detail, but I'll, I'll keep this uh, really focused. Um, four things. And just to lay the premise, um, I come from an unchurched home, came to Christ in high school. And then I was discipled through a student movement at the University of Kansas. Um, and then after that, uh, spent two years working for a student mov movement called Student Mobilization, and then went to seminary. And, and during that process, I just fell in love with the Bible. And I studied Jesus a lot and his idea of disciple making. <clears throat> and I really focused in on that. And then one day it just dawned on me that the way the disciples understood everything Jesus taught about discipleship and everything that he talked when he gave them the Great Commission to, to go and make disciples, when you read the book of Acts, you understand how they understood what Jesus taught them. And it was to go plant churches, disciple-making communities. And that kind of changed my life because I began to grab a huge uh, adoring love for the body of Christ, as weak and messed up as it is, and began to realize that, that the real untapped potential to reach the world are the churches, uh, both themselves as they exist and the ones they could plant. And so for us, um, what we do is, is we're trying to create a compelling vision of disciple making in our church where people have a, a perspective of what it means to be a follower of Christ and how they can live as a follower of Christ, and how they're called to be a part of reaching the world for Christ. And so one of the, the first things we want to do is just do everything we can to continually cast a global-oriented, compelling vision of how disciple-making is the way to accomplish that. And, and with that, then, we realize that we need to have a working definition. You can't just say be a disciple, you have to explain to people what a disciple is, who a disciple is, and, and how they become a disciple. And so just a, a simple working definition. We, we kind of, you've got an illustration there that kind of gives the main components of what it is that we see Jesus developing in his disciples' lives that he wanted them to develop in other people's lives. And so we, we, we are trying to ingrain that into every element of our church when it comes to developing people. Um, you know, are we teaching them to be spirit-filled? Are we teaching them uh, how to obey God's word? Are we teaching them how to pray? Uh, are we working with them on loving one another? Those kinds of things, you know, do, are, are they caught up in the world system or are they given over um, to Christ and, and his ways? And then with that then is a practical process. And this I think most churches fail here because uh, they think of disciple making in terms of I'm going to take someone from an unreached person to a convert and, 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 and they're going to become a, a new disciple and then I'm going to help them become a growing disciple and then they're going to become a laboring disciple and then they're going to become a multiplying disciple and then they're going to become a reproducing disciple. And that's what, what a lot of us discipleship was. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying what would happen if a church created a process where uh, if I can't take someone all the way through, I contribute in a part of the process that the church oversees where others jump in at other elements. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create not just individuals who can take someone all the way through, but a church that creates a process that makes sure people make it all the way through, even if handoffs have to be made along the way. And then the last is just a, a thriving culture um, where discipleship is ingrained into our culture. 
And uh, there, there are a lot of things that relate to this. This is, uh, we're in a learning community uh, right now as a church, and this has been one of the things that really drew us to want to uh, talk about this, is how, how do we actually make disciple-making the culture of our church? And so those are kind of the four things that, that we're really working on. And then just uh, the last thing I would share with you, um, when we look at um, trying to, uh, to uh, organize this, um, we are really trying to create a movement uh, rather than an organization. And uh, there are three elements to the movement we're trying to create. Uh, first would be momentum, and, uh, and then multiplication, and then management. How am I doing? Am I about, have I used more than my eight or ten minutes? No. Am I about right? Okay. This, when, when we think of our church, momentum is that spirit-led collaboration where the Holy Spirit is le leading us, and we're doing things that, that enhance the, the, move, the mo momentum, the movement of your congregation. But the basis of that movement has to be multiplication. Uh, you have to reproduce. And if you're not reproducing, then ev eventually you're, you're going to die out. But even if you have momentum and multiplication and you don't have some level of management, a coordination of the efforts that, that don't squelch it with too much uh, bureaucracy like our government, but, uh, but, but gives enough freedom and organization uh, so that people can stay coordinated in their efforts, then you have a healthy balance between organization and organism. And so this is kind of an operative paradigm as a senior leader in my mind is, are we doing things that create momentum and demonstrate a spirit-led work as a church? Uh, are we multiplying? Do we have an intentional process created that will help us to multiply and reproduce disciples and disciple-making communities, both locally and globally? And then are we managed to the degree that makes us efficient and effective? Do we have too much management? that's squelching it, or do we have too little management that's creating chaos? And so in th this is just kind of an overview of how, as a, a church, we're trying to create and make disciples. Poorly. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, that's a very difficult thing, especially, you know, I think um, our church has 50 full-time equivalents. And, a great number of those are in our um, Mother's Day Out program and the children's ministry uh, child care that often supports many of the things that we run, mops and um, different things. And so, um, you know, how we as a staff just stay together, let alone then incorporate all of the key leaders in the church, uh, is a very difficult thing. And, uh, and so uh, I think just the balance, you know, we, we've try to create a balance between uh, structure and relationship and uh, in very much uh, somewhat of a family orientation but that's not the only metaphor that describes the church so sometimes there's an army metaphor uh, that comes to play too you know um, we were on our way down, and uh, Mike Hoagland, who's the chairman of our elders and is uh, passionate about disciple-making, was sharing uh, 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, and when he was discipled, the first half of that verse is easy, and trust to, to faithful people. Um, we have a lot of that going on. Um, who will teach others also? We don't have enough of that going on. And that's, you know, I would say, if you if you has to be both A and B, um, we've got uh, a single digit percentage that are doing that. I, I can give you some quick quick things. Uh, we we've tried to shift. Um, we had our our small group system. We call them life groups. They were originally organized around community and facilitators, and we've shifted those. And now they're, they're, we, we, we call our life group leaders shepherds. And their goal is, is really to, to make disciples. And so they're no longer facilitators. They're not facilitating the group. They are supposed to lead that group and help them become disciples. So that, that's one thing we've done. How, how did you equip them? 
Uh, that's an ongoing equipping. And, and so uh, right now, uh, most of our shepherds are overseen by group shepherds who are our elders. And so uh, our elders are responsible for pouring into the lives of the, of the leaders. Doesn't work perfectly, but that's one of the things we've done. Um, another thing that we're doing is uh, we, we have focused on um, trying to create uh, just agreement around some of the things I handed out to you. Um, you know, I'd say the first thing is to get everybody on the same page with knowledge before you're going to get them on the same page in practice. And so we've really been working a lot on that.